let me ask you this, Lewis. What is your number one complaint about Disney Plus and the content that is on there? I've seen most of it already. Okay. And that's so actually I, a fair, I want that's more. a fair complaint. Yeah. So how do you feel about mature content? Like maybe R-rated movies being on there. Do you think that's a good idea or a bad idea? Bad because I feel like the remotes given to five-year-olds to babysit uh, them throughout the day via with Disney plus as a, for the company. It's bad for me. I don't care. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Well, that's the thing is uh, this article popped up on comicbook.com a couple days ago. Uh, Disney plus is surveying users about adding more mature content, which is interesting because that has been something that I've heard uh, with the Love Simon show or Love Love Victor, right? And the Lizzie McGuire show that Disney kind of not canceled, but they weren't really happy with the way it was going. Right. Uh, because it was going to deal with like Lizzie McGuire in her 30s and like the problems that go along with that of being a single mom of two. Uh, so it was going to be a bit more mature, maybe a bit more racy at times. And uh, Disney was like, no, we can't have that. No. But uh, now they're asking the questions. Uh, about uh, about this. So it says here that Disney Plus has been billed as a top tier streaming service, specifically designed for all ages, but particularly geared towards the younger audiences, which I don't think anyone's going to disagree with. Uh, any remotely suggestive content is given a warning to let parents know what their kids are getting into, and that does make sense. Um, however, thanks to his purchase of Fox, Disney now has a massive library of uh, content for older audiences at its disposal. Shows like Buffy and Firefly have been absent from Disney Plus since its arrival, but that could change in the near future. Disney is surveying some of his customers about adding older skewing content. So what it, what I take from this is that they're going to be inter asking people how they feel about like more like maybe TV 14 shows, mm -hmm. you know, like those kind of programs. It's not that I view necessarily Firefly as being R rated, definitely PG 13, you know, Buffy PG 13 compared to Mandalorian. Well, Ma Mandalorian was like, I mean, it was very mild. Even though they cut a dude in half in the first five minutes of the first episode, <laughs> you know, I mean, like it was it was exceptionally mild and that dude got sliced in, too. Uh, and then a lot of people died later on in the episode. So but it's just there's no blood. And that's that's a factor. That's actually a pretty big factor. Uh, now, one person uh, went to uh, Disney Plus Reddit this week to share a screenshot from an email survey sent out. The survey simply asks the user how likely they would be to watch a TV show on the list provided. Uh, and each option has a drop down list of choices. The shows included uh, Buffy, uh, Firefly, Modern Family, How I Met Your Mother, Blackish, and Malcolm in the Middle. And I mean, those are all kind of aimed, you know, not that Modern Family, in modern, they're aimed for like general ish audiences, but there are a lot of dirty jokes in Modern Family. And um, there's an episode. In Modern Family, where the kids from like the main family walk in on the mom and dad having sex, and you know, because ki kids will do that. That's you know, it's a trope or whatever. But it wasn't like the dad was on top of mom, which is you know how you would generally perceive seeing that, right? The dad was behind mom, <laughs> and she was on all she was on all fours. She was on her knees, you know. And like they had like a sheet that was there, but it was the way they framed the shot because they needed to get the two actors in the frame as the kids were opening up the door. They shot through a door. So it's like <laughs> it was just like this little window of opportunity. So they had to stack them like like midgets in an overcoat. Right. And they had to stack them. And then the kids open up and I just looked at my girlfriend. I'm like, oh, my God. You know, like to me, that's hysterical because uh, it's so against what you would normally see on something they would always shoot like from a missionary perspective but not a doggy style so i mean that's a bit more of the mature content right there uh how i met your mother has a lot of sexual humor um malcolm in the middle had it did have sexual humor it was not like a, a great deal but it was definitely some pg-13 stuff in there um as well as uh some in innuendos and a lot of uh kind of immature um content uh now it does say here that these shows aren't necessarily for adults only and the material is still tame enough to have been aired on television. However, it is more suggestive uh, than the majority of movies and shows featured on Disney+. Plus. After all, this is the same service that moved Love, Simon TV series to Hulu and parted ways with the Lizzie McGuire showrunner. Um, and I'm, you know, uh, 
uh, they now Comic Book Here did reach out to Disney and confirm that the emails surveys were indeed uh, real and legitimate. And so that does show you that Disney is looking to expand everything. And that's good, actually. Well, they could always edit that that scene, those scenes out. They did with uh, Simpsons, so they could probably have like a different version of, uh, you know, they could have all the the episodes archived and know exactly where the naughty parts are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They'll they'll they'll. I mean, a hundred percent. They'll have that all completely under control. Uh, no questions asked on my end. Wait, you what do you mean on the Simpsons? They edited stuff out. I don't remember the hearing about them editing edit, editing stuff out of the Simpsons. They did edit a few things out of The Simpsons. That's what I heard, but I don't watch The Simpsons. But I heard there were fiddle, there were parts missing. Um, but you had a good idea the other day as well, is to have it as a section and then maybe have a password. You know, like have Disney Disney Plus uh, whatever, Disney Plus fourteen, um, and then have like a password so the kids the children can't get in. That may be a good idea because yeah. right now it's not. It's not cutting it, Matt. Um, I like having it, but I got to be honest. I don't think I've tuned in for a month and a half to Disney+. Plus. I haven't streamed anything on it. Oh, you haven't watched anything in a while? No, I haven't watched anything. Dude, it's on It's on my house every single day. Correct. Because I have kids. Do to bump into um, you know, something adult? No. Well, no, but it's like my, my daughter's two, and you know, she, she just... She knows how to get to Woody Buzz and and Jesse and Bullseye. That's what she gets to, uh, but, and and I get that. But it's like also show. But we'll see what they need to have is is like yeah, a section of Disney Plus, kind of like Netflix Kids, uh, or I mean, look. And realistically, this is probably more likely. And I'm sure I'm not alone in thinking this. I would assume that they probably would just put all that content on Hulu. It just makes the most amount of sense to put it on Hulu. I feel like you represent what they want, the customer they want. And the customer they want is not going to be uh, your two-year-old or whatever. Is not going to be looking for, um, you know, these other shows like Buffy or whatever. Well, yeah, but I think Hulu would be the better place for it. I just, Absolutely. I mean, with with charging the thirteen dollars a month for Disney Plus, Hulu, uh, not Hulu Plus, but uh, but Hulu and ESPN. Um, I mean, it just seems to make the most amount of sense. They obviously are going to want to draw people uh, to that bundle package because of the cheap price. And honestly. With where things are right now, I could see that actually being a, a strategic move for on Disney's part uh, to drive traffic to that bundle package because the 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 upside for Disney is while they might lose the you know people oh it costs only a few dollars more than Disney Plus look at the deal you get oh the savings the savings Lewis the <laughs> savings but what it really is is it's not Hulu Plus because Hulu Plus is twelve bucks a month that's what I pay and that's no commercials. So I pay the extra fee uh, for that, and and I love that, by the way. Um, but if I were to go and migrate down uh, to the bundle package, then I wouldn't. I would have to watch commercials, and what are commercials? More ad revenue for Disney. So it makes the most amount of sense for them to figure out a way to pad Hulu with the content that people want to watch, which is one of the reasons why they're putting all the FX content on Hulu. And any new show that premieres on FX, like uh, It's Always Sunny Philadelphia or anything like that, the next day, those are going to be able to watch on Hulu. So that's their portal to the more adult world. And that should be the spinoff, right? That should be, they should merge yep. the two into one app. They, that's what they should do. Merge the two into one app, have Disney Plus and Hulu and ESPN in one app. And that way it's it's less confusing for the audience and it would probably prompt more people to get the bundle package to unlock all the options. Um, and then they would make more money in the long in, in the long run. Um, and yeah, know, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I know people were expecting them to drop the entire Fox library, their entire Disney library, you know, on launch. But I feel like they're going to be the strategy is to do everything in waves. They they released this thing last year. Um, they got their they know kind of like how it works. They got all the kinks out. Now their second wave of attack is coming. And I I personally think they're gonna wait till HBO uh makes their move. And then here comes the idea you were just talking about with Hulu being their mature content uh to counter. And I think that would be a great counter. 
Yeah, they're going to need to counter uh, HBO Max because that's going to be the next big competitor. I mean, Netflix is so big, you're not going to be able to yeah, take I a... Netflix, to... I don't think Netflix is going to um, do anything. I don't know if you remember, but Netflix used to do uh, DVD rentals, right? Yeah, they still do. They still do. Well, they were big back then, number one, doing that. And I remember like Walmart, which is a giant corporation, try to, you know take the business away from them and they couldn't well they took out walmart so yeah well, i i know i know that there was a lot of the companies that like tried to take a swipe at netflix and like stop them from yeah, buying yeah well buy well what they were doing like warner brothers was really bad about this they did the same thing to Redbox. they would uh tell companies uh they wouldn't let the companies purchase in uh wholesale bulk right like that like you know like like retailers would um and and blockbuster and hollywood video would they wouldn't do that they said no you have to buy at the uh at the at the actual full msrp price and that's what they forced them to do for a while and then they worked the deal to go oh 28 days later we, you'll be able to then rent out the discs and and it was a whole it was a whole mess but yeah netflix you know it buried the competition uh they they effectively killed the video stores across the board and now we're in disney plus territory and they're going to, you know, now that they've got this 28 and a half million people that we know of uh, just in the United States and Canada, and I think Netherlands and maybe a couple of countries, as it opens up into the UK, opens up into more territories, that number is going to increase. And I do wonder if HBO Max and 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 Quibi even, uh, which is launching here in a couple of days, if those are going to just have massively just downtrodden launches because of COVID-19 because of where we are, uh, people just aren't going to want to spend the extra money. I really wonder that. Don't forget Peacock. When does that even come out? <laughs> I don't think they have. I don't think they have a date for Peacock yet. Uh, well, the world's bracing themselves, man. So. Oh my! Oh, July fifteenth, twenty twenty is when that's coming. Um, you know, uh, but apparently, apparently. Uh, Xfinity customers get it three months early in April 15th. So that's going to be fascinating. I want to see if Disney is going to find a way to counter that. Um, and Peacock is going to only be five bucks a month or 10 bucks for an ad free version. So Peacock and HBO Max are going to be making a move for Disney and, uh, and to get in on that action because they know they can't touch Netflix. So honestly, Disney Plus is going to have to do something massive, which, which actually... I don't want to get because we already went over this earlier tonight, but in that moment, thinking about that right now, part of me thinks maybe they are going to drop Black Widow on VOD as a way to completely thwart uh, people going over to HBO Max. But I, I think it could blow up in their face too. MCU movies for a very long time in the theater. So I doubt that's going to happen. Yeah, I mean it's it's a thought. It's a it's a theory. It's it's a Disney theory. And, and I think when I say that, people start bashing me and they start following me from channel to channel to 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 uh, criticize my opinions. But I want it to happen. I want to see Black Widow at home. I prefer to see it at home. But it's just I'm just saying that in my opinion, it's not going to happen because it doesn't make sense financially. I want to see it in theaters. Yeah, you're right. I well, I want to see it the first time in theaters. I want to see all of these movies the first time on the big screen. Well, that's the best so, way. Yeah, that is I'm, it. I'm yeah. screen, so, you, you do Jesus. Yes, <laughs> yes. Louis Lecca of Nerd Report has an 80 inch television, and he likes to flaunt it. Yeah, and yeah. So there's that. Anyway, moving on.